I'm very pleased to have uh, Tracy Legamer here, who's got, uh, again, real life frontline experience of the benefits um, <laughs> of good digital communications in respect of health services. So, <laughs> Tracy, thank you very much. Thank you, for Tara, for showing those maps. That was really helpful um, because what they very neatly illustrated for me, without me having a set of slides myself, is exactly the patch which is my patch in NHS Highland. Um, I'm the area manager for West, which is Sky, Loch Alge, Westeros, and Loch Arbor. And that's part of the North and West Operational Unit, which is the remote and rural operational unit for NHS Highland. Um, so North and West Operational Unit is basically that whole area that is the dark bit on the light pollution map or the big red bit on the map where there is no broadband. Um, it's some of the most remote and rural areas in Highland um, and in Scotland, I think. Um, so we face this challenge every single day in delivering services. Um, I think that that 16% that aren't covered are probably all my clients. Um, in NHS Highland, we deliver since um, April last year, um, integrated health and social care. So when I'm talking about NHS Highland and the people who are my customers, if you like, I'm not just talking about people in hospitals, people receiving um, nursing or allied health professional services in the communities, GP services. I'm also talking about adults on the receiving end of social care. So I'm, I have within my remit care homes, home care, care at home services, um, and all of those social care, so, so social work, Vicky, you were asking about social work earlier, um, and so, adult social workers fall within my scope of work now. So it's all health and social care. So it's a really big responsibility. It's a lot of customers, it's a lot of people out there who need our services and they need them to work. Um, and one of the earlier speakers, I think Vicky Nairn was talking about in the context of Highland Council um, as having an older population than the rest of Scotland or the rest of the UK, I'm not sure which. Um, and alongside that, we have um, there's this low population density. We have some high mountains that get in the way um, of good signal, for example, for mobile phones, and a very large dispersed geography, which means we have to have lots and lots of mass to support connectivity. So that's the depressing stuff. So I'll give some good stuff, and then I might talk a bit more about a bit more depressing stuff, so <laughs> <laughs> just to finish it off. So there is lots of stuff that we're actually doing within NHS Highland um, and across Scotland actually we've got some really good things that we're doing that rely on good connectivity um, we have Vicky Nairn mentioned it we have telehealth so that's people in their own homes who have technology which helps them to monitor their own health on a daily basis and our hub in Inverness um, coordinates the calls for that telecare also sits alongside that so those are your things like your your alarms that you know if people have had a fall if they go out of their house their front door opens you know they haven't moved around smoke alarms carbon monoxide alarms all of those things that help people um, the assisted living stuff we also do an awful lot of our day-to-day -day business whether it's the support stuff you know the back office stuff or whether it's frontline stuff by quite simple you would think technology like video conferencing so we have in NHS Highland we have more video conferencing units I think probably double the number of video conferencing units than the rest of the health boards in Scotland put together and that includes boards you'd think like Western Isles and Orkney and Shetland where you'd think they'd use it quite a bit and like Vicky Nairn I have a real problem where I've, it's routine for me I have a video conferencing unit on my desk as does every other manager I know and I therefore find it incredible that I phone somebody in Edinburgh and say, well, can I just video conference to that meeting? And they go, well, we'll see if the video conference unit's available. <laughs> oh, it's not available that day, and you're stuck, basically. Um, so we do a lot of our 
meetings that way, but we also do a lot and increasingly do outpatient consultations that, that way. There is lots of examples of initiatives um, using video conferencing to do outpatient consultations, speech and language therapy, um, the diabetic consultants. We have teleneurology, teledermatology, telestroke. We have v VC units in A&E departments for connecting with, for example, um, trauma specialists in Aberdeen and places like that. Um, we have video conferencing units in GP practices in my patch in Westeros, for example, because that really helps the GPs to stay in touch in terms of their skills updates, their trainings, their peer support. But it also provides the opportunity for local people to go into the surgery and have an outpatient consultation that might only be a 10 minute chat with their specialist, but otherwise would have been the whole day travel to Inverness find the parking in Ragmore, 10 minutes, and then head back again. Even worse if you're somebody who has to rely on public transport. It becomes an almost impossible task. So we use this for routine stuff, we use it for emergency stuff, and we use it for some really exciting initiatives. Um, we also have some kind of big pieces of work going on around tele stuff, <laughs> tele healthcare medicine. Um, but relying on this connectivity, there's something nationally, UK-wide, called Dallas, which people may have heard of, delivering assisted living lifestyles at scale. Um, Highland, with their partners in Highland Council and Argyll and Butte Council, are one of the five Scottish partners in this initiative. Um, and that is going to deliver, that's looking at a whole range of things, um, but it's going to deliver things in the early days around more video consultations, things like digital postcards, using smartphones to support people with self-management of long-term conditions. Um, it's also linking up with the Implementing Transnational Telemedicine Solutions Project, which is a, an international piece of work run by the Centre for Health Science. Um, David Heaney's running that, who are also doing lots of work around video consultations, smartphones, digital bits and pieces. So there's a, a lot of stuff going on that is actually really fundamental to the way that we deliver our services. It's part of our core business, but it relies on having good connectivity. Um, the Dallas stuff in particular is joint funded by Scottish Government, um, Highlands and Islands Enterprise, um, as well as the councils and the NHS funding that's coming to that and Scottish Government funding. So there's a remit there, not only to think about how we deliver our services, but I think really importantly for what we've been talking about this morning, a remit to um, generate these types of business opportunities in Scotland. And I think that's particularly important in Highland, given the subject of the conversation this morning, that if we can use these initiatives to generate businesses to start up or to create more business for existing businesses. Um, for example, there's a company in Sky, part of my patch, um, called Sightkit, who are one of the partners in Dallas, who do most of their business outside of Scotland and certainly outside of Highland Scotland because that's just where the business is. And what we need to be doing is looking at people like that and generating the business for them locally by doing more of this ourselves. So that's some of, the, some of the positive things that we're doing. And that's all like really exciting. It's stuff we should be doing. It's stuff that directly benefits our service users. And that's the most important thing to me. I'm not just kind of coming to work and doing this because it's exciting and interesting and it's, it's really cool to be thinking about commissioning an app on a smartphone. I'm doing it because I'm thinking at the end of the day, who is that going to benefit? Who's that going to help? How will that improve somebody's life? Um, so that's really why availability really matters to us in NHS Highland. I think we mentioned earlier that about the experience of consumers around this, and it's all very well putting up the statistics and saying, you know, 90 odd percent of people have this, and you know, by 2016 there'll be this percentage and so on. But actually, I'm out there every day, and I'm talking to people who are worried about their services because. 
they don't have mobile signal, they can't get broadband. And it's not that they're worried because I'm saying all of your services are going to switch to being digital. They're worried because I'm going to them, for example, and I'm talking about how we need to think about the services that are delivered in their community. They may be a small, very remote and rural community who has traditionally relied on a single-handed GP. Now, here's a real-life example of what's actually going on now. Small, very rural, single-handed GP. Now, I know, as a manager, that I cannot continue to deliver that kind of service. It isn't sustainable. Single-handed GPs in very remote and rural areas are isolated, they lose their skills very quickly, they do not have access to training, they are not safe, and they want to leave. And we've had some very telling examples just in this last year. We had a tragic death of a GP. We had, and this was in the space of a few months, the death of a GP, um, very, very tragically. Um, we had two GPs in another very close by area leaving. Um, and all of a sudden, that whole area, it's West Loch Abba, as it happens, has no services. There are people in very remote and rural areas who are left with nothing to support them. They have no accesses, access to primary health care. So I know that I can't keep putting GPs back into that situation. I could go out and I could recruit and I could probably get somebody eventually to come and do that job. And they, that means coming and doing it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's the reality. Living in a goldfish bowl, going to the co-op, standing in the street, you know, going to the pub for a meal, never off duty. We can't subject people to that. So I have to think of doing something differently in those areas. And when I start to think differently about how I provide services to those areas, and I have to have a conversation with that community about how that could be done differently, what I come up against time and time again is this worry about their social isolation. What happens if, and when they look at these things, what they're concerned about is the emergency stuff, the really urgent stuff, and the things that they don't feel safe about. And one of the reasons they don't feel safe is their experience of their lack of connectivity, because they know that it's hard for them to rely on mobile signal. It's hard for them to access services that other people access because they don't have broadband connectivity. So every single day in trying to deliver services, communities are suffering, if you like, as a result of not having this availability. And it, it does have an impact on the kind of services I can deliver and what I can offer to them. Um, I'd like to be able to offer them lots of things that would reassure them about their safety, that would improve the resilience of that community. But a lot of those things do rely on having broadband. They do rely on having good mobile signal. Um, this example I was giving in West Loch Abba, we have got a really innovative solution about GP services in that area. But again, in starting to look at that, a big barrier that we have in connecting up as we want to do three different GP practices into one networked larger practice comes when they want to share patient records. And there is no provider that will help them to share patient records other than a smaller local provider, private provider. It can't be done using the, the standard provision. You know, so there's, it's, Tara, you said, you know, we live in rural areas, we find ways around things. So there are ways around things, but, you know, it's difficult. We, we have to kind of dig around to find these people who will do it, find people who have satellite dishes and, and things like that that will help us to provide these services. Um, and on a day-to-day -day level, it also impacts routine services. I think there was a question earlier about social workers sending things back. I think, Vicky, you asked the question. And we have that. We've tried to do things um, like our community nurses in one area asked for digital pens. 
um, thinking that would be helpful to them when they're out in the community for recording their activity um, and making those patient records. We struggle to provide anything like that because of mobile connectivity. And yes, you can download it, you can upload it into whatever device, wait till you get somewhere where there's a signal and then fire it all off to the, the server or wherever. But lots of these places, people can be a long time, they can be days before they actually come in into an area where there is sufficient signal to do that. Um, so this is affecting my nurses who are out there every single day delivering care to patients. It's affecting my midwives on call in Westeros. I have an issue with them at the moment because nationally our NHS contract is changing providers for our mobile phone services and they're on the new provider now and they don't have any signal. The old provider was great. They had enough signal to deal with. Now they have no signal. And that's a national NHS contract. Um, Care at home are using smartphones for work for workforce scheduling. And I know there are carers working for care at home who can't use those services as well as they should be because of the lack of mobile signal in the area. So every single day we come up against this and just, just the routine stuff that bog standard that should be really easy. And for me, that's the most important thing to start to get right. And if we can get that right, then what that means is that for future service delivery, for the things that I need to put into place to redesign and to modernise services that will really benefit patients, um, and for services that they can access that will really benefit them, that they can take control of their lives, take control of their health, then we need to have that connectivity, we need that availability for them. So sorry I ended up on a bit of a moan, but... <laughs>